Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Rafael Varane returned to Real Madrid today, but he did not stay to train with the rest of the squad. Rafael Varane's move to Man United is expected to accelerate. Manchester United are prepared to fork out £43 million for Rafael Varane. But Real Madrid are demanding £50 million. Don't forget Manchester United are willing to double Rafael Varane's wages in order to sign him this summer. Talks are ongoing between Manchester United and Real Madrid for Varane. He said the other day that Man United are hours away from completing the transfer of Varane. T F1 said yesterday that there's an agreement in principle between Manchester United and Rafael Varane. He says Varane has agreed a contract until 2026 and he has agreed the personal terms. Fabrizio Romano has spoken a lot about the Rafael Varane saga. He did recently say that Solskjaer wants the club to keep pushing to sign Varane. Because he did mention that Solskjaer admires Varane. Uh, Romano also said yesterday the rumours of Man United having a bid rejected for Varane are not true. And the other day he said that Varane confirmed to Man United that he's ready to accept our contract bid. It's looking very imminent that Varane is going to be our second major signing this summer. Sky Sports mentioned the other week that we'd been given permission to approach Varane over the personal terms. J. Felix Diaz said the other day that Manchester United have to offer more money for Varane or the deal will not happen. But Varane's departure from Real Madrid is very, very imminent. We received a massive boost in our pursuit of Varane because it says Real Madrid's wages were forced to be slashed by £150 million. Not so long ago, Rafael Varane and his family were allegedly house hunting in Manchester. Real Madrid offered Varane a renewal contract offer but he rejected it. His current contract at Real Madrid expires next year. Varane has endured 10 years at Real Madrid, so he's been a long-serving player. Real Madrid got Varane from Lens back in 2011. At Real Madrid, Varane has made 360 appearances in all competitions. And won a lot of trophies at Real Madrid, so reflecting on that, he's got a good pedigree as a player. We went in for Varane back in 2011 under the Sir Alex Ferguson area. We also went in for him back in 2018. <coughs> But Varane will exceed expectations in the Premier League. You know, he's regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. And what a centre-back partnership that's going to be, Varane and Harry Maguire, because they'll complement each other very well.
So that's more news on Varane. Uh, there's been a lot of midfielders on Manchester United's agenda. Uh, Man United have obviously linked with Eduardo Camavinga from Rennes. Uh, we're also linked with Ruben Neves from Wolves. A uh, recent narrative said that Man United are leading Arsenal in the race to sign Ruben Neves and Wolves are willing to sell Ruben Neves for £35 million, which is a bargain. Ruben Neves is 24. He is a midfielder. He's under contract with Wolves until 2024. Wolves paid £15.8 million for him from Porto back in 2017. He's made 151 appearances in the Premier League for Wolves. Sol Niguez, you know, he's been another midfielder on our agenda. Solskjaer recently called Niguez. Mundo Deportivo said not so long ago that Man United have been in advanced talks with Sol Niguez's agent. And he says Man United are the front runners to sign him, so <clears throat> he said we are ahead of Liverpool in the race. And Barcelona were in talks with Atletico Madrid over a swap deal involving Griezmann and Sol Niguez. But I think Sol Niguez wants to make a move to the Premier League. I think Atletico Madrid are willing to sell him for around £43 million. He has a release clause of £130 million. He's under contract with Atletico Madrid until 2026. Because back in 2017, he signed a nine-year contract with Atletico Madrid. Being a long-serving player at Atletico Madrid, he's been with them for a good 13 years or so now. And he guess can be deployed as a central midfielder or a defensive midfielder. Uh, you know the news on Leon Goretzka. Sport Build said the other day that Manchester United have submitted a contract offer to sign Leon Goretzka from Bayern Munich on a free transfer in the summer of 2022, which is next year. So far in this summer transfer window, Manchester United have made two signings. We obviously brought Tom Eaton in on a free transfer from Aston Villa. Um, we also brought Jadon Sancho in from Borussia Dortmund. Uh, reports came out yesterday saying the announcement of Jadon Sancho's transfer to Man United has been delayed by a minor issue. An announcement is expected soon. Janet Adj Fortoff said that an announcement is around the corner. Fabrizio Romano said that the paperwork had been sorted between Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund for Sancho. Last week, Sancho completed his medical with us. I'm very convinced that Solskjaer is going to get all the players he wants to recommend in in this summer transfer window. So, reflecting on that, I think Man United are going to enjoy a very good summer transfer window. But it's about time Solskjaer got the backing he deserves because he wasn't backed enough for such a long time. This summer transfer window is Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. Solskjaer has made it clear that he wants to make around four signings in this summer transfer window. And obviously he identified the areas in the squad where he wants to strengthen up. <clears throat> but our board did make it clear that they'll back Solskjaer with summer signings and a new contract. And before the summer transfer window opened, it said Solskjaer was going to be given a 150 million transfer budget to buy around four or five new players. 
like I said, we're not only focusing on the incomings in this summer transfer window, we're also focusing on the outgoings as well. Um, I think there's a good chance that Manchester United are going to loan Brandon Williams out to obviously gain him more experience and to get him a lot more opportunities. Brandon Williams is our third choice left back, so he seldom plays for Man United. Um, Alex Tellez, um, I think we could offload him in this summer transfer window because he has been subjected to transfer speculation recently. Um, it said Inter Milan wanted Alex Tellez on loan and the other week Sky in Italy said that Roma were in talks to sign Alex Tellez as a replacement for the injured Leonardo Spinazzola. Tellez has only endured one season at Man United. But he's hardly played, he's only made like nine appearances in the Premier League. When we got to Les last year, I expected him to be our first choice left back immediately. Obviously it hasn't happened. We got to Les for 15.4 million from Porto. He's under contract with Man United until 2024. Phil Jones, um, I'm expecting us to offload him in this summer transfer window because he's always been inconsistent, plus he doesn't get in our 11 and he was out of injury for a while last season. Jones is the only outfield player that's still with us since the Ferguson era. Jones has been a long-serving player at Man United. He's enjoyed 10 years at the club. Axel Tuanzebe, uh, we have agreed to let him go. It's the right decision because obviously he'll get a lot more opportunities and he'll gain more experience as well, which is beneficial. Diego Delor, I'm expecting him to leave. Um, he was out on loan with AC Milan last season. Andres Pereira, I'm expecting us to get rid of him as well. Um, he was out on loan with Lazio last season. <coughs> Uh, Paul Pogba, there's a good chance that he's going to leave Manchester United in this summer transfer window. He said yesterday that Paul Pogba has rejected a new £50 million contract offer at Manchester United. So, reflecting on that, he's set to leave. Pogba's current contract expires next year because last season we triggered that one-year extension on his contract. Now, not so long ago, it said that Paul Pogba decides to run his contract down and then he'll make a decision on his future next summer. It did also mention that a new contract for Paul Pogba could see him stay at Manchester United for the rest of his career. Sky Sports said yesterday that PSG are interested in Paul Pogba. Uh, Fabrizio Romano came out and said that nothing is advanced between PSG and Pogba. Tuto Mercato Webb said that Man United is set to receive a €60 million Euro bid from PSG for Pogba. Paul Pogba was recently discussing the personal terms with PSG, but PSG have not yet made formal contact with Man United. But he says Pogba is close to reaching an agreement to join PSG. PSG wants to partner Pogba alongside Juan Yardem in their midfield. The other week it actually said that Pogba wants to join PSG this summer. <clears throat> Pogba's had a long-running transfer saga, though. 
you know, he's also been linked with Real Madrid, he's been linked with his former club Juventus. Uh, Barcelona have been in for him. It recently said Barcelona are working tirelessly on a swap deal for Paul Pogba. Says they're willing to offer Antoine Griezmann and Samuel Umtiti as part of the deal for Pogba. And Inter Milan have been in for him before. Paul Pogba produced his best performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season. Um, at one point last season, though, he was out with a thigh injury and he sustained some ankle injuries at Man United. But I want Pogba to stay because he's an imperative player. But if we are to let him go, we need to get a good, adequate replacement for him. <laughs> Pogba's endured five seasons at Man United since he rejoined. He's our most expensive sign at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. And Minio Riola has obviously been desperate to get Pogba out of the football club. Uh, could David De Gea still leave Manchester United in this summer transfer window? Um, it recently said that De Gea decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for a starting place. It said the other week that De Gea could be loaned out by Man United next season to make room in the goalkeeping department. It said that De Gea was set for talks with Solskjaer over his future after the Euros. But De Gea is determined to fight for his future. If we did sell De, De Gea in this summer transfer window, I reckon we'd get from between 40 to £50 million. Pounds. Because he's still a very good goalkeeper, De Gea, despite the mistakes he's made in the last couple of years. De Gea is on, what, £375,000 a week at Man United, which is a substantial amount. Being a long servant, though, he's enjoyed 10 years at the club, so he's been with us since the Ferguson era. De Gea's had uh, around eight good years out of the 10 years he's been with us. Um, I initially thought Martial Matic... And Van der Beek were going to be leaving, but it looks like now they're going to be staying. Uh, next season is going to be massive for Solskjaer, and he is aware of that. It's very imperative that we start off next season strongly because if we don't, then I think Solskjaer will be under pressure. You know, despite us signing Sancho and despite us being on the verge of getting Varane, it still doesn't change my perception on Solskjaer. I still don't think he's the long-term manager for Man United and I think a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. But I certainly think that Solskjaer needs more time. You know, these United fans that are Ollie in, there's also United fans that are Ollie out. And next season will be Solskjaer's third full season as Manchester United manager because he's enjoyed two full seasons at the moment. I'd say next season Solskjaer has to win a trophy because he's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017, which is four years ago now which is nowhere near good enough to our standards. Solskjaer's ambition, actually, for next season is to win the Premier League. These United fans are sceptical that we're going to win the title under Ole. We haven't won the league since 2013, which is eight years ago now. And I think next season, Solskjaer's decision-making has got to improve because in a lot of his games at Man United so far, he has been tactically naive. But I have criticised Solskjaer a lot during his managerial tenure at Man United. Obviously, I've had my reasons behind it. But despite that, I still think Ole is our best manager since Ferguson because in certain aspects, he has brought consistency back.
you know, Solskjaer has been in charge of Manchester United for around 31 months now, which is over two years. And reflecting now on his being at the football club, he has gained some managerial experience and he has learnt quite a bit on the job and he's tried a few different elements. I'm surprised Oli is still Man United manager because we have endured very bad periods under him where he's been very close to being sacked and we lost the Europa League final to Villarreal last season. But with Solskjaer being a club legend, I think that's what's basically saved his job. But I do have my concerns about Oli, but there's also a lot of things I've got to credit Oli for as well. I think Solskjaer has made good signings as Manchester United manager. He has now spent over £300 million at the club. Solskjaer has also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since his coming, which he knew he had to do. In all his first full season, he got us to three semi-finals, got us a third place finish. Did well in quite a lot of aspects in his second full season. Got us to the Europa League final. I know we didn't win it, but he still deserved credit for getting us to the final. It was his first major final as Man United manager. Last season got us to the FA Cup quarter final, the EFL Cup semi final. He got us a second place finish last season. Last season went the entire season without losing away from home in the Premier League, which obviously was a record. Uh, Solskjaer's more or less given everybody their chances to express themselves, including the young players, which is a positive. And I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth. But when Solskjaer got appointed in as Man United manager, he knew it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the culture of the club, and he knew he had a lot to do when he came in. So, yeah, they are the positives. But when we have been inconsistent, not all of the blame has stemmed from Ole. Obviously, he's been accountable for certain things, but I think during a lot of them bad periods, there's been certain players that have had to take responsibility. And I hate the way the football club has been run for a long time. Like I said, the Glazers, they've been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. And so too is Ed Woodward. Uh, Woodward's obviously leaving Manchester United. He's had a 16-year association with the club. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.